Do you realise you could be breaking the law? Your van could be illegal. I do see quite a lot of vans which are driving around and they are illegal. And today I'm going to show you the reasons why they are. And also, I'm going to show you something which might not end you up in a police car, it might land you in an ambulance. And again, a lot of people are doing this and you really shouldn't. So stay tuned for that. Let's begin with something pretty much everybody does when they get a new van. You've got this nice new shiny van, whether it's brand new or you've bought, it's just new to you. You want to put some wheels on it. Fantastic. They make a huge difference as I've shown in one of my previous videos. But they must be suitable for your vehicle. Just because they fit, just because the holes line up and they bolt on, doesn't mean they're suitable. You need to make sure that they are load rated. Your van has got a far higher carrying capacity than a car and each of those wheels needs to be a specific rating to be able to withstand the weight which you've got in your van. So, how do you know this? Well, if you open your bonnet, open your bonnet up on the left hand side, on its side there is a plaque and on that plaque it will tell you 2,800 kilograms, 3,000 kilograms, 3,200 kilograms. So that's effectively telling you that you've got a T32, T28, T32, T26. Underneath that, you'll have a number which is a one and a number two. These numbers, one and two, is showing you the axles. So number one is your front axle and number two is your rear axle. And what you need to look at is the greatest number of these. So on a T32, as per this plate here, the, the axle weight for number two is the greatest, which is 1,720. So that is the maximum weight that rear axle can take. So dividing this number by two gives you the load rating for what you need for each of those wheels on the back. So 860. So the minimum load rating for a T32 is 860 kilograms. Do not get a wheel which has got a lower load rating than that. There are a lot of manufacturers out there of lots of nice fancy wheels and you need to check to make sure that that wheel is suitable for your van. But if you've not got a T32, as, the, uh, as you can see on this plate here, this is a T28. And as you can tell, it doesn't need to be load rated as highly, so you can get away with a lower load rated tyre. On this table here, you can see that we've got the T32, which is a minimum of 860 kilograms. Uh, a T30, a minimum of 805 kilograms, T28, 800 kilograms, and a T26, 750 kilograms. But don't go off this table, have a look at the plaque on your vehicle, have a look at the axles, and make sure that you know what your load rating needs to be, and make sure that your wheels are suitable. In addition to the actual load rating of the wheel itself, you've obviously got the tyre. Now the tyre itself also does need to be load rated and you can tell this by the number which is on the tyre. Uh, there's obviously quite a lot of numbers on the tyre showing you the size of it, the width of it, etc. But the number which you're looking at is the one which is going to be towards the end. So what you need this number to be, as again I'll show you a table here, for a T32 it needs to be 103, a minimum of 103. T30 101, a T28 100 and a T26 a minimum of 98. Now this is really really important. If your tyre or your wheel fails in the event of an accident and it isn't correctly load rated you could be getting yourself into a lot of trouble. It isn't worth it. Make sure you buy the appropriate wheel and tyre for your vehicle. You've spent a lot of money on it, you don't want to be spending any more because you've broken the law you've caused an accident because it's not correct. Make sure it is load rated correctly. It isn't just an accident that could be the problem though. You've got a commercial vehicle and as you've got a commercial vehicle, you could find yourself being pulled over by VOSA when they're gonna be carrying out a general check of your vehicle. And if it's not correctly load rated, again, you're gonna be in some trouble. So make sure, do make sure that you do it. And going back to my bad conversions video, which I did a few weeks ago, unfortunately, there are converters who are putting wheels on which are not going to be load rated correctly for that vehicle. I've seen it and it's, it's just frightening. 
check yours, make sure it is right. So next, and we're gonna be staying with weight, is the actual carrying capacity of your van. So as you may well know, the T32, the T30, T28, T26, that is the gross vehicle weight of your vehicle. So that is the maximum carrying capacity of your vehicle. So a T32 translates to 3,200 kilograms, 3.2 tonnes, and it cannot be exceeded. It must not be exceeded. So what does that mean for you and your van and how are you gonna know that you're actually gonna be overweight or not? Well, this isn't actually that straightforward because each vehicle does start life as a different sort of vehicle. So I might have a combi van, which is gonna start its life heavier than a panel van because it's obviously gonna have the rear seats in, etc. So this calculation which I'm doing now is just gonna be an example calculation just to give you an idea you will be able to find out what your vehicle's unladen weight is, which is the figure which we're gonna to need to be able to do this calculation. So the unladen weight of a vehicle is the weight of the vehicle itself, um, effectively when it comes out of the factory with all the consumables in it, the oil, the engine, the seats, everything, etc. but not the passenger or anything which you're gonna be putting in the rear of it. So, the unladen weight will give an example of this T32 of 1,900 kilograms, 1.9 ton. That is the unladen weight which we're going to use for this vehicle because that is ballpark um, a figure which, which these vehicles are. So if you've got a gross vehicle weight of 3,200 kilograms and you've got an unladen weight of 1,900 kilograms, that's actually going to give you a payload of 1,300 kilograms. So that 1,300 kilograms is effectively the weight which you've got to be able to put things in the vehicle, including yourself, before you get up to that 3,200, which is gonna put you over that limit. <clears throat> it's a lot, isn't it? If you've got a T32, the 3,200 kilograms, that is actually quite a lot, 1.3 tons. But if you've got a T26, then you're only looking at 700 kilograms. And by the time you add in your, you've filled up your gas bottle, you've filled your water tanks, you've got passengers in there, you've got two adults, you've got two children. You know, you are soon gonna be eaten into that 700 kilograms really, really quickly. Now you've got to remember that you've done your camper van conversion, so you've got your kitchen, you've got your fridge, you've got your worktops, you've got your units, you've got your nice bed what you're gonna be sleeping on, you've got your pop top which you put up there for the kids, you've got a bike rack on the back and you put your bikes on there, and you've got a solar panel on the roof so your leisure battery, your electrical system isn't gonna go flat. You've got so much stuff in there. You know, you are adding to a lot of weight and you don't even know it. You know, your clothes, your awning, your Crocs, <laughs> your dry robe, I don't actually own a pair of Crocs, but you are adding a lot of stuff to it and you are eating into that potentially 700 kilograms for a T26 really, really easily. So you need to make sure that you're not overweight, but how do you know you're not overweight? You can't just put it on the bathroom scales. Well, this is where the website, which I'll put a link below, um, where you can find a public weight bridge. Uh, and it's a thing, it's a government site and you just pop in there where you actually live and it'll give you um, a list of public way bridges which you can go to. So you can go to the way, these way bridges and tell them what you want to do, put your van on there and it will give you the weight. So if you do that, when you've got your full water tanks, your full gas tanks, you've put your, all your passengers in there, all your luggage, your load, etc. Put it on that way bridge and then you are gonna know where you sit as far as weight's concerned. Obviously you don't have to do that all the time. If you've fully crammed it to start with, you're gonna have a pretty good base idea of where you are and if you are near that limit you do know whenever you need to go away you are going to have to think about it carefully to make sure that you don't exceed it so the consequences of exceeding the weight well the weight of the vehicle does affect the characteristics of the driving so your acceleration your braking your steering the, the way the vehicle handles it's all affected by the weight of your vehicle so if you've got an overloaded vehicle and you need to take evasive action and something goes wrong because it's not acting the way it should do because it's far too heavy, you could be getting yourself in a lot of trouble, but also putting other road users at risk, which obviously is something which you don't want to do. So although this might seem a bit of a silly thing because 1300 kilograms effectively payload for a T32 is actually quite a lot, you will be surprised 
what your van wet could weigh. Once you put your things in there, it can be quite heavy. So it's worth a trip to your local weigh bridge just to test it out, just to make sure that you're not overloaded. If you're involved in an accident and you're overloaded, it really could be a costly mistake. Just take a bit of time out, go and get it weighed and make sure that you're not overweight. So you've weighed your vehicle, you've been to weigh it, it's all good, you're under the limits. It's all good, right? You've chucked all of it stuff in. No, it isn't because it's illegal to drive a vehicle with unsecure loads. The loads must be, it must be packed safe and secure. I see so many photos on the forums and it's frightening. Look at me, we've just packed for a weekend away. Look at all our stuff. Oh my God, it's a death trap. You're carrying kids in the back of there you, and you've got things piled high to the roof. You know, you, you, they open the side door of the van and everything's just piled up. No, don't do it. Things need to be secure. If you're involved in an accident, some harsh acceleration or somebody hits you, the things which you've got loose in the back of that vehicle are going to act like missiles. You could hit one of your children. You could hit the driver, which could cause an even further serious accident. Could hit the passenger. If you're going to fly around, you know, you might even just be lucky and just smash your window. But don't do it. It has to be secure. You need to pack your vehicle properly. Now, this actually comes on to something to slightly, which I mentioned previously about the rock and roll beds and the rib beds and the benefits of it. So if you'll have a look at this one here, this is a van which has got a rock and roll bed and there's no room it, once you've opened the tailgate to put stuff in there. It's just a tiny amount of space. Whereas if you've opted for a rib bed, you've got a lot more space in there. You need to be putting stuff behind the passengers. You know, just pack as safe as you possibly can. With the rib bed here, it, you can just put a lot of stuff in there and it doesn't have to be in that middle compartment in between you and the rear passengers. Other options which you've got is you could be putting a roof box on top of your, your roof or even your pop top, but do be careful about the weight restrictions on pop tops because they are limited to weight. You could be putting a two lay type storage box on the back of your tow bar. You know, your bikes can be on the bike rack on the back, or you could even be potentially towing a small trailer, but just don't have it unsecure in that middle compartment because it's dangerous. And I'm not even talking about people p stacking up pillows and things. I'm talking some serious stuff, which is being packed up there on the kitchen units and stuff. You know, you've got the heavy items on the kitchen units. All it takes is to go around, you know, go around a corner, you know, a right hand bend and that stuff comes flying across and takes out one of your kids. No, just, just don't do it, please. Just think, think and just don't do it. It is an offence, so make sure that you're packed safe. And additionally, did you know that it's actually against the law? to travel in a vehicle with an unrestrained animal. You need to make sure that your animal is restrained. So those of who you've got some uh, dub dogs, make sure that your dog is safe within that vehicle by ensuring that they are secure. Look that up online to the, the specific ways you can do to, to restrain them. Um, I'm sure most of you do anyway, uh, but you know, it's just something there. If you wasn't aware, you know, if you are a new owner, you might not have been aware of it. So that's just another little bit of advice for you. I have some additional parts of this coming up soon about breaking the law, a lot more interesting than this one, uh, busting some myths, uh, which a lot of people have and answering some of your questions, which I do know need answering. So please do have a look out for that. Anyway, how could you end up in an ambulance instead of a police car? Feet on the dashboard. It might be comfy, it might feel really, really good to be doing it while you're doing it. Don't do it. Seriously, don't do it. Just have a look at Google. There are some horrific injuries that people have done this and been involved in an accident. It is not worth it. The airbags which you've got in your vehicle is under so much pressure. When that airbag goes off in the event of an accident, it just pushes up. And as it's pushing up, your legs are going up and going up behind your ears. <laughs> that hurts just thinking about it. You can cause yourself some pretty horrific injuries. I'm not gonna send you any links or anything. Just Google it, feet up on the dashboard in an accident. It isn't a pretty sight. Don't do it, it's not worth it. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. Please do give it a like. And if you haven't seen any of the other videos or bad conversions or exterior modifications, please do have a look at those here. For now, take care. I shall see you soon.